Okay, so what we are going to cover now is flex chairs, because especially if you have a water jet and you work with sheet metal, it's very, very easy to make flex chairs. So we'll describe a few types. The classic flex chair is simply a big block cut out where you can put in not just a one stage, this is a linear stage, which I'll explain later, but you can also put reduction levers in order to get any kind of range you want. So if you carefully follow what's going on here, the first stage is a 5 to 1 reduction lever where this is a pivot. This end is a pivot. This piece, it's called a wiggle bar, it's used to eliminate the effect uh, of the the, to eliminate the fact that this is actually rotating around the pivot, what you want is you want a straight line motion. So you have to put in a bar that the effect this rotates wouldn't be transferred to the next stage. Okay, so basically decouple the linear motion from the rotation. So these wiggle bars are like standard when you have multi-stage flexures. So you have, so you have here a lever with a micrometer screw a wiggle bar and an identical lever. These two are identical designs, the pivot is on this side and there's a wiggle bar again. So this is a 5 to 1, a 3 to 1, so you get a 15 to 1 reduction coupled to a classical design linear motion flexure stage. So all this is cut out of course from one piece on the water jet. If you want a very high accuracy flexure, you really should pre-drill the holes because how well this moves and how linear it is, how much it follows a straight line, depends on the exact matching of all the pivot points or the elastic pivots. Now the water jet isn't accurate enough uh, to give you a straightness of travel, say in the range of one micron. So what you have to do, you have to drill and ream these holes and then make all the other cuts with the water jet. Align the water jet to one of the holes and add all the cuts. Now this way you're going to get, say, a range here, which is maybe two millimeters travel following a straight line to one micron. Now for example, if you look at the meter here, it's hooked up to a capacitance gauge, which measures the position of the linear stage. And the, the meter is set at the highest gain here, which is 10 nanometers per division. So you can see there is no problem moving it 10 nanometer at a time without any backlash. I can go forward and backward without any backlash and easily set it to 10 nanometer. Now this flex chair is just a tutorial, so it's made of aluminum. Obviously aluminum is very temperature sensitive, about 22, 23 ppm per degree. So even you can't have aluminum if you want the stability. So in real life, this will have to be cut out of invar or maybe some glass like quartz or some other material which is very stable with temperature. You can see because it's made of aluminum, say if I put it somewhere and I just put my hand over it without touching it, it just drifts from the radiated heat from my hand. So it drifted like 100 nanometer just from the radiated heat. If I take my hand away, it's going to drift slowly back, drifts uh, slower one way or the other. So obviously this is not designed for this kind of stability, but the principle, the layout is, is classic flexure. You can make those at any size, of course. Uh, now this is an example I showed earlier. This is a, uh, that's about as small as you can make on a water jet, because here the arms which flex are about 0.3 millimeter, 0.4 millimeter wide and that's about as narrow a parallel arm you can cut on the water jet reliably. Uh, so this is made from a type 25 beryllium copper which is very very flexible and very nice to work with and it's a bit similar to that although you can't quite see it here in details. As I mentioned before too, you, the nuts are actually inserted in little water jet cut slots so you don't have to do any machining or tapping except uh, going over the middle hole with a reamer or a drill. Now, these flex chairs are limited by the elastic range of the material. 
So if you, even if you take very good steel, the elastic range is 1%. So uh, you can't have large travel, but what you can do, you can make flex chairs where the flexing parts are nitinol. And nitinol has an elastic range about 10 times steel. Now it's an expensive material, it's too expensive to cut out the whole block from nitinol. But what you can easily do is you can do the same design from sheet metal and nitinol. So this linear motion is the same as this. So I'll, I'll show how it works. So if I hold down the base and I move this, this is a moving part. Now you'll notice that the moving part moves X, the sidebars move half X, so you can't clamp it by the sidebars because they have to move. So let's show it again. So if I hold it here, this is a base, this is a moving part, okay, and you can see the sidebars also moving half the amount. Now this moves in a perfectly straight line, and the easiest way to explain why is because it's symmetric. So because of symmetry, why would it go one way and not the other? Now, it has high, high stiffness in this plane because these white strips would have somehow to buckle. Okay? It has high stiffness in this plane because these strips would have to tension, to stretch. It has high stiffness in any kind of rotational motion. In the only direction it is soft is this way. Okay? And because it's night in all, you can have, this is a 20 millimeter range flexure, which is quite nice. Now, a couple of tricks that I mentioned before, night in all cannot be spot welded, so you trap each piece between two little pieces of stainless. You bend the edges round in order not to have a sharp transition. That's very important, of course, because anything with a sharp transition with a stress concentration problem. And you very, very carefully measure to make those equal. So in other words, the best way to do that is actually have some jig, which is a piece of metal acting as a spacer. So when you weld, you insert this piece of metal, and then you weld, and then you take it out. So the spacing is the same everywhere. Because the, how, straight, how much of a straight line it will travel has to do with exactly matching those eight springs, both in length and stiffness. So stiffness is no problem, it's all one strip, but in length they have to be quite nicely matched. Now you can cheat a bit if you made one of those and measured it and you found out that it's not a perfectly straight line, you can actually modify the springs after the fact. For example, you can either grind them a bit or you can clamp something on them to change the stiffness of the pivot point. So a lot of these flex chairs are corrected after they are assembled if you really need the ultimate straightness. The easiest way to test the straightness, all that you have to do is put it here, put a laser pointer here, like clamp it to the table, put a laser pointer here, shoot a beam across the room, say 10 meters away, and have somebody move this while you're standing there watching the spot of the laser pointer on the wall, because one milliradian error in 10 meters will be at 10 millimeters, which is quite visible. So you can measure it down to 50 microradian just by watching the laser spot. Now if you want to measure it more precisely, you need an autocollimator. So basically autocollimator is something which looks at the reflection of a target. You put a mirror here, you set up an autocollimator, and with that one you can measure sub-arc seconds. Okay? Because if there is a deviation from linearity, it must be accompanied uh, by an angular motion, because one is just the integral of the other. So, so it's much easier to measure the angular motion because of reflection of light. So basically you measure the angular motion and then you can integrate it and get this deviation from straightness. Okay, so this is this type of flex chair. Now, this is a very common type called a flex pivot. And this is used whenever you need pivots which don't have to rotate a full circle. Let's say you have some arm which has to go to two positions. So instead of putting bearings, you can do a, what's called a cross hinge flexure. You can see one strip goes this way, one strip goes this way. So over small angles, it behaves as if there was a real pivot here. In other words, the center of rotation is fixed. To illustrate there, I connected two pointers here, 
one pointer on each arm and you can see where the two pointers point to each other. So when I tilt it at small angles, the tips of the pointers don't move relative to each other. At a big angle, the pointers will separate. But for small angles, the tips of the pointer behave as if there was a pivot point there. Okay, and this also is made of nitinol, so it can bend 90 degrees. Okay. So that's a classic cross hinge. Now, the general advantage of flex chairs over traditional methods like slides uh, is A, no lubrication. So it's good in dirty environment and you, you never worry about having to get there to lubricate it. Number two, no wear. Okay, obviously it's just flex chairs, there's no wear. If you design it right, there is infinite life. Okay. And now, number three, no backlash. Because, because any stage like this, you have to add some preload with a spring. You have to be always careful about backlash and also sideways. You have to adjust the preload screws carefully. It says here factory adjusted. Because once it wears a bit, there's going to be a bit of looseness. Now, in this thing, there is never going to develop any play or looseness. Okay, so these are three huge advantages. Okay. Now, the biggest advantage, the fourth one, is that it's basically free. Because if you have a water jet, all you need is a piece of scrap metal. Now, this, these things cost at least a hundred bucks, right? And this is free, basically. It takes five minutes. So, and you can incorporate it into your design, like integral flexures. So, especially for R&D, for students, you can make as many of those as you want. Okay. Uh, so that's, yeah, one, one comment about what limits the elastic range, because in order to have infinite life, you cannot use up all the elastic range. Elastic range means a deformation after which it doesn't return anymore. To the, if you go beyond the elastic range, it will stay permanently deformed. So if you want infinite life from flex chairs, you shouldn't use up more than about two thirds of the elastic range. Now, the exact number depends on the metal. In some metals, you can use up 70%. Some metals, you cannot exceed 30% in order of infinite life. But just as a quick and dirty rule, if you bend something in a flex chair and you find out the elastic range, you know, never, never go more than two-thirds of it, preferably stay below half of it, and then it will last forever.